there. Hey, look at that! Have you ever seen anything like that? Welcome to They Think It's All Over. But David and Jonathan this week is the glamorous queen of British swimming in the 80s, who sadly all too often lost out to hairy, burly opponents pumped full of drugs. And as she's on the opposite side to Rory, expect no change there. <laughs> Sharon Davis. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is one of the finest... Steve makes up the second most successful pair of sporting brothers in the world after Venus and Serena Williams. <laughs> it's Mark Moore. <laughs> it's our handbags round now, all about the feuds that break out between sports people, Gary, Rory and Mark. Your question concerns Mark's captain and wound partner, Steve Waugh. Here he is, scoring yet another hundred. Go on, go on. He's taken it. He dived to make his hundred. And his row with ex-England coach David Lloyd seen working on the England player's technique before a recent tour to Australia. <laughs> so, what was the cause of the row between the Australian captain and David Gower's sky colleague, Gary's team? Mm. Can I just first a big round of applause for Mark Ward, one of the greatest cricketers of all time. <laughs> and a famous twin. There's three of you, aren't there? There's, um... Steve Three Wall. twins. Steve. No, Three twins. <laughs> Steve Wall. <laughs> Steve Wall. That's four. <laughs> it's amazing, calling, calling all of the first three Steve Wall. <laughs> Mark and your sister Shane Wall. <laughs> now, is it short they say? Because I know that um, in the womb they say that twins develop this sort of telepathy with each other. Is that true? Um, well. Stephen's run me at about eight times when we've been batting together, so I'm not sure what the telepathy is. Actually, Gary it hasn't I, worked, so. Gary and I have worked at this sort of telepathy. We've been on this uh, show so often together that we actually... Finish each other's sentences. <laughs> that was... <laughs> that was really awful! The only way you could have made that worse, uh, Gary, was just said, Is it now? Do I say it now? <laughs> uh, Jonathan, actually, Jonathan's mother thought, thought she was having twins, but it turned out it just for the afterbirth. <laughs> if only they hadn't thrown the child away. <laughs> hey, by the way, hats off to David for coming out here. Well, not coming no, out. No, no. <laughs> for appearing on the show in, in the full well, leather that he normally only reserves for those quiet weekends. <laughs> and you know, it took a lot of courage for him to come out because, as you probably know, he's terrified of leather. Especially when it's wrapped around a cricket ball. <laughs> I keep looking at these two and wanting to do Y, M, C, A. I can't help I look at the two of them and think, I want to put on the other porn channel. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, can I ask a question? Is it true that you have a pink elephant tattooed on your bottom? Yes. Well, just in case anyone doesn't believe her. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Waugh, David Lloyd. Falling right. out. So, um, and, uh, Mark, have you got any secret plans to beat England in the Ashes test? Um, plan on turning up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary and I have been done this show so often together, we can actually... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something to do with um, the fact that um, um, Mark and Steve are over here for ludicrously short contracts in um, English county teams, and David Lloyd thought they were spying. Yes, that's correct, for three points, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah. To be fair, Lloyd has good reasons for thinking Steve Waugh was a spy after he walked into the Sky interview room to find the Australian stroking a white cat. Although it turned out he just had David Gower's head in his lap. <laughs> <laughs> David, Jonathan and Sharon, your squabble concerns two of the world's most successful managers. Here's Alex Ferguson watching Arsenal's Sylvain Wiltor destroy United's title hopes last May. And here's Sven Euren Eriksson watching Arsenal's David Seaman destroy England's World Cup hopes last June. <laughs> but it's not Fergie's perennial battles with Sven himself we're worried about, but a dispute with Sven's mum, Ulla. What was it all about, David's team? 
Before we start on the, the question here, can I just say how really lovely it is to have Sharon on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest swimmers this country's ever produced. One of the greatest swimmers in the world, in fact. It's nice to be here, having been poorly last week. Well, yeah. I'm a bit of a chest infection last week. As you can hear, the voices are quite back <laughs> not, here. We're not Man, hearing you. Get the chest infection. <laughs> So what was it? Were you encouraged? Did you do? Were you, did you go to a school that was especially yeah, yeah, good for swimming? Yeah, I was. I was. Actually, I was at an all boys boarding school from 15 <laughs> through to 18. Their, their admissions tutor wants shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it was a normal school when you went there. And when you left, it was a school for the blind. <laughs> <laughs> they produced one of the greatest swimmers of country history, and no doubt many of the greatest pole vaulters, I should imagine. As well. <laughs> Stop it! I'd like to point out I do not objectify women anyway, <laughs> nor am I sexist, because it's been proven that women are more intelligent than men. And we get paid more, so it sort of evens out. But... <laughs> We're all happy, aren't we? That's it. <laughs> Question. Huh? Something to do it's with Sven's mum. It's yes. oh, Ula. Ula Eriksson. Ula. And uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Ula. Was, was Fergie Ula. insisting she have a hip operation when in fact she's perfectly fit? <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how hip operation is the first thing he thinks. Well, yeah, he's, 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 he's at that age, all his friends are having them. He wants one! She doesn't like Mr. Ferguson very much, does she? Mm. she? She thinks that um, he keeps his players away from her son's team. I, I, I should give you three points for that. I, I do. It's all about the current club v country debate. Ula Eriksson was quoted in The Sun saying, Alex Ferguson is a threat to my son. Sven once told me that it's pointless having national team games in April or May because Ferguson always makes sure that his players aren't fit. No less a person than Gary Lineker himself condemned Manchester United for withholding their England players. It's up to every player to insist on playing, he said. That's Gary Lineker, who mysteriously never learnt the Japanese for, I insist on playing. <laughs> Sven is now facing a fitness crisis ahead of England's vital European qualifier in Slovakia. Emil Heskey has been ruled fit. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. It's our pathetic excuses round now. Gary's team, it's Scotland's hilarious two-all draw against the Faroe Islands for you. The Faroes threaten and score! Ah, the Faroes on the move again, that's through for Pedersen! <laughs> Full time in Toftier and it's been a shocker. Inept, woeful, pitiful, the adjectives go on and on to try to describe the Scottish performance. Now, of course, Scotland and their German manager, Bertie Votes, were utterly blameless when they let in two goals against a country whose population doesn't even fill a football stadium. So what, according to Votes himself, was the real reason for their humbling draw? First things first, I'm serious now. I mean, that's a really sad night. I mean, to draw yeah. against Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is human I just have to explain to Gary that the pharaohs aren't in Egypt. <laughs> Have you ever had any humiliating results, Mark? Um, quite a few. We actually drew with England on one occasion. Yeah. <laughs> I think you lost last, last series one game, didn't you? Who was that? And Mark, Mark Butcher got his big score. Headingley. Hmm. We did. Yeah. So shut the f*** up. All right. <laughs> I've been reading up on you, Mark, and in his first <laughs> test against England, up. am I right in thinking your first test against England, you scored 134, is that right? Uh, something like that, 130 something. And, and David was playing that match, wasn't he? Okay, and David, you know, listen, old, David, in his, in his first innings, <laughs> scored 11. That okay. was his first But then when he came back in, yeah. and when brilliance was called for, yeah. and mastery and control, oh boy. tell him what you scored. Can you remember? No. 16, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Okay. The Faroe yeah. Islands. FIFA ranked the Faroe Islands. Uh, FIFA ranked Scotland below the Vatican City and Disneyland, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a population of uh, 45,000, and most of them are puffins. <laughs> do you know what a puffin is, Gary? I do. Do you know what the Latin for puffin is? Fraticula Arctica. Oh, you know as well. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on this show so long together. We've been... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Gary and I can actually finish each other's sentences. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it, it wasn't the major ground. Volcano, isn't it, it wasn't. They didn't play at that ma um, the forty-five thousand all-seater stadium. No. Got. It was a minor two, ground. Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty votes actually said there can be no excuses, but the pitch is too small and bumpy, and it's neither wide enough nor long enough. <laughs> Scotland boss Bertie Votes has had a series of management jobs, most recently as manager of Q8. That's the Q8 filling station near the E1, <laughs> near much of Gladbach. <coughs> After England's exit from the World Cup at the hands of eventual winners, Brazil, Glasgow Airport came to a standstill as delighted Scots punched the air and cheered at the screen. Well, luckily, we're a little more mature than that. Let's just remind ourselves, once again, of that result. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> it's swimming for you, and here's Mark's compatriot Ian Thorpe breaking yet another world record on the way to gold in the 400 metres freestyle at the Commonwealth Games. Ian Thorpe awesome. really going for it. Three, 40.17. This is absolutely amazing. Is he going to make it under 3.40? Oh, he has! Well, he's done a new world now, earlier this year, a female TV presenter was sacked after she interviewed Ian Thorpe. But what was the excuse given? Can I just Team say, of he's leather. Supposed the, he's supposed to be the fastest swimmer in the world. I've seen Gary swim faster than that. Michael Barrymore's pool party, wasn't it? <laughs> and that's the last in the current series of the Think <laughs> Very oh. tall bloke, so I think it's got something to do with his very big feet. You won gold medals for swimming, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, Commonwealth. Yeah. You won a Commonwealth gold. That must be going. That must be better than sex. I thought. Well, not better than sex with me, but better than sex with Gary, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Although actually, winning a pound on a scratch card is better than sex with Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and, I, and you've been. A... That is not what your lady wife said. <laughs> Because you, know, yeah, you gave her the pound afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, when I swim, you know, I'm a very fast swimmer, but I had a nickname. Well, I can see, yeah. When at school, when I was swimming, I had a nickname Iceberg. Because when I did the front crawl, seven eighths of my body mass was underwater. <laughs> you do the maths, ladies. <laughs> I tell you, but that was a curse, though. I used to have to put a rubber cap on the end in the change room so I didn't get verrucas off the floor. <laughs> you know, you don't think about these things, you normal people. Do you think it's bigger than Joel Garner's? You, know, you must have known, well, not, not closely, but you know, the West Indian fast many. bowler? Yep. Joel Garner, who was reputed to have something quite enormous. Um, <laughs> he was six foot eight. Was... <laughs> this outfit yeah. has brought out the beast in him, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey? they say, it's a different man. <laughs> You've not been on the Sinatogen again, have you? <laughs> Very pretty girl went up to Joel one night, plucked up the car, and said, Joel, I've been meaning to ask you this for a long, long time. Are you built in proportion? And he looked down and said, Lady, if I were built in proportion, I'd be nine foot eight. <laughs> so what we're talking about is big Ian people. Thorpe, wasn't it? Thorpe. 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 It's got very big feet, which David hasn't. David's feet were tiny, actually. <laughs> David's feet looked like they were bound by a Chinese monk when he was doing <laughs> it. Yes, Ian Thorpe, I think it's something to do with... Um, innuendos and um because of course we have to do lots of interviews during the commonwealth games and they're very strict about us only being able to ask two questions you can only ask well, two so, questions yeah, yeah. so two you questions. go what how big are your feet and how big is your cock and that's it <laughs> i used to interview like that <laughs> <laughs> actually got the sack because there was innuendos of course we wouldn't do that here on this panel but innuendos yeah, in no question oh, absolutely here. correct well done Sharon. thank you Yes, Nikki Voss was fired by Australia's Channel 7 after she suggested that Ian Thorpe's size 17 feet might mean he was blessed in another part of his anatomy. Nikki Voss lost her job because her line of questioning was considered inappropriate. It was made quite clear to her that any proper Australian interviewer would have said, Struth, mate, can I have a gander at your cock? <laughs> Only in an Australian accent. <laughs> at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Well done, sir. It's that moment in the show where we pose the question, what's going on, Gary's team? It's a glimpse into the world of cricket commentary for you.
So, what was going on there, Gary's team? Maybe, maybe they found a channel that Jonathan wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. oh, no. you, who do you play for? Are you over here playing for Essex? Essex do you know anything about Essex, Mark? Very good uh, county, yeah. <laughs> Very good. So it's got I'll a know. reputation for thick people and easy women. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we, we, in England, we call it the Australia of England. <laughs> I'll do it, mate. Are you kidding me? Mate, I'm on your team. I'm not Damien. I'll take a look. Yeah, leave him alone. But show what book have you got there, Mark? You see them? Oh, well, this one. Yeah. Who's this? Merv Hughes is a very tender lover. Noticeable references to Gower here. Gower. Gower. See under embarrassment. Come on, then, let's have it and answer. Um, was it, um, I think that... Finish each other's sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I think something to do with a, I think something to do with a, a bet. They had an accumulator, and I think that was the last, that was the sixth horse in it, or fifth horse or We'll whatever. give you three points for that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cheers were because England cricketer turned commentator Mike Atherton had just won over £10,000 on the races after the last horse in an accumulator had triumphed at Newmarket. Mike Atherton, of course, famously got into trouble when he was caught with earth in his pocket. Thank goodness they didn't look in Phil Tufnell's pocket, where there was soil, seedlings and suspicious halogen lamps. <laughs> Mark Nicholas presents that show where a party of nobodies are flown into the middle of nowhere and picked off one by one. Or the ashes, as it's called. <laughs> David's team, it's Athletics for You and the Irish sprinting star Paul Brizzle, running alone at the European Championships. So why was he running all on his own? Before we answer the question, <laughs> David does look good. He's gone that extra he mile does. today. But you know there is something missing. I've been doodling over here and I've just, I've just knocked this together. And I, I wonder if we could just have a look at like that. Now you see, <laughs> that's the look. And if, and if Sharon, if you'd put that one yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, is she or is she not a dead ringer for Rona Cameron? <laughs> Did you not? <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, We're looking at a, a, a bloke running on his own. Yes. The one by 100 metres. <laughs> Apparently he stood around for five minutes after that, waiting for the result of the photo finish. <laughs> He's cooking tonight. Oh, yeah, he? <laughs> Something like that happened to me at school once. We were doing the cross country and I was fanning around and I wouldn't finish it. And they no, made all the other boys wait by the coach and I had to run it again on my own. Is that what's happened there? So the, the teacher... Yeah, that often happens during the European Championship. <laughs> There's no need for you to mock me like that. I'm trying my best. <laughs> so you just, just stop it or I'll get my mother in and she will talk to your mother about it. <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did have to run it again, didn't he? He did have, he did have to run it again. Yeah, yes, so that's he that's did have to run it again. But not in his socks and pants. Like <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw this. I promise you, I actually watched this. Oh, uh, they had this on in the daycare centre, did they? <laughs> And I, there was, there was a camera boom that came down, and when they started the race, his camera boom was right in his lane, and he had to avoid it, swerve out the way. So they gave him a chance to run again to see if he could run quickly enough to qualify, which of course he didn't. Is the correct answer for three Thank points you. for David? Thank you. A fond of knowledge. That's what you're going to say. Thank you back. Back. I'm there for you. You know that. Yes, the answer is that Paul Brizzle was allowed a solo rerun after a camera got in the way in the original heat. It was the ugliest incident involving a sportsman and a camera since the last time Luke Chadwick had his passport photo taken. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. Time for a laying on of hands as we play Field of Sportsman. Gary and Rory, your first this week, if you'd right. like to say... Actually, before you do that, Nick, can I just... Did see that story about a Newcastle landlady who put a scarf in her pub saying Sunderland is shite? Yeah. You saw that and she got fined £40. £40? I thought, that's cheap. So... <laughs> here we are. Come on! Out of order. 
Yeah. I'll, I'll wear this at Arsenal Tottenham game. <coughs> Do you have any Spurs fans in tonight? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what a great season you had. <laughs> OK. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. Rory! <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? Oh! <coughs> Get off! <laughs> it's murder on the dance floor. <laughs> What's this? What have you got? What have you got? Uh, oh. Is it Jonathan? <laughs> It's Happy? a camera. Hang on. Thank you, Gary. It's a camera. Yeah. And a, is, is, it? is Dwight York doing gay porn nowadays? <laughs> Careful, <It's>... please. <laughs> oh, she's a skinny girl. <laughs> what the hell? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the Irish guy. What's yes, it called? Uh, Whose name I can't remember. Uh, Brizzle. Brizzle. Oh, oh, correct. Correct. Three yeah. points. I think that amply explains the last few years of Match of the Day. Gary stands in front of a camera, holds it and goes, what's this? <laughs> OK, Jonathan and David, if you'd like to take your positions. Careful those trousers, boys. I'll tell you what. Boys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look so good. David! <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Time starts now. <laughs> right a bit, Jonathan. It's a proud young gay man. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Good luck with your brother. Okay. Well done for Stonewalls. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone else here? Over here. <laughs> Hang on, there's something. There's something. Careful, careful. careful. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I don't know who it is, but he's smiling. <laughs> is it Santa Claus? The fellow it's... with the big round cheeks? <laughs> Hello, it's an upside down thing. Hey, hold on. <laughs> is this some sort of mutant bat? Is it. <laughs> what? <laughs> mutant bat. No, bat. <laughs> it's in a harness, so it's a man and lady in a harness. See? It... Hello. <laughs> you just this side of a lawsuit, got... Jonathan. Just... I... <laughs> I'm trying not to go anywhere, I'm not going to, but I've got a blindfold on. Is it a, yes, yeah, like a big pendulum? Yeah. And a big clock. It's fantastic. What time is it? I don't know, but there'll be a gigantic <laughs> dong in here in a minute, I'll tell you. Oh, no! Hey? No! I don't know who it is, but I'm going to enjoy it for as long as I can get away with it. <laughs> you feel free to touch me back, love. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Go no one, no one. Hey, no. Not so hard, though. Just a bit gentler. More loving. Go on. Hit him! Go for it! <laughs> Sharon, come on out, we'll make it a foursome. Come on. <laughs> this must be this a diver. Um, Brilliant. Commonwealth Games, uh, the girl on the medal, Jane Smith. Jane Smith, Smith is a great answer! Scores at the end of that round are David's team with 12 points and Gary's team with 12 points. Wow. Oh, yeah. We stagger to the finishing line by playing the name game. The leaders goes first, which is neither team, so alphabetically we'll have David's team go first. Hey. Sharon, could you just pass those along, please? Okay. Right. Okay, here we go. The time starts right, now. We spoke about earlier. Sven Ewan Eriksson's mum. Ulla. Ulla, Ulla Eriksson, okay. Uh, Australian singer, Big Feet. Who knows if the rest of him is just as big? Thorpey. 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 Ian Thorpey. Ian Thorpey. Okay. Uh, this bloke, first name, you think of Carnival, you think of street children, you think of a lovely no, place lost. in Brazil. Rio. Rio. Second name Fred is... Fred. Fred. There you go. If you wanted to scare a child or an old person, you'd Take go... Ah! Boom, Boom, correct. The second name. If a magazine comes out every seven days, it is a... 
Weekly. 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 There you go, Weekly. Uh, this is a golfer from the US. Second name is the same as the one on uh, Are You Being Served Always Showed Her Pussy. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Molly Slocum. That's Mrs. Yes, you got it right. Well, well Molly Slocum. Slocum. Yeah. Slocum. Slocum. Yeah, but Slocum's what I'm after. And uh, first name is a former Prime Minister. I always thought he was a, well, he was a bachelor, confirmed. You to like a big band. Miller. Glenn Miller was never the Prime Minister's <laughs> I know you're in the school, we boys, but you should have focused Ted Heath. Ted Heath, he's Slocum, there you go. Second name, oh dear. Okay, um... <laughs> first name, uh, one of the disciples. <laughs> you rob him to pay Paul. Peter. 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 Second name is right in front of you, Sharon. <laughs> he's not a woman, he is a... Man. Rubber. And that is, what is that? Cock. Man cock. There you go, we got it. <laughs> By the way, I don't care for you now. <laughs> I haven't got for use. <laughs> okay, seven. We'll win it for you. Seven. You'll get seven. Mark, could you pass those along, please? <laughs> <laughs> as many as you can, starting now. Um, Scottish manager, crap. Pharaohs, uh, German. Finish each other's sentences. <laughs> uh, 30 votes. Very good. Uh, his brother. You know that. Steve Ward. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, fastest uh, new 100 metre record holder. Oh, that's Same Montgomery. Yeah. Montgomery. Same Tim Montgomery. Very good indeed. Um, right, his second name is not Snatchy, it's... Grabby. Grabby, very good. It's for, oh, uh, it's, American uh, State, the capital is Denver. Col Colorado Grabby. Very oh. good, he's very good. Give me a go. First name, Try. first name, you know, Linem, used to, you'd be on it. Linem, Gary. Linem, hmm. first name. Desmond. Des. Um, Des. Gary. Yeah, that's right. When you want to pay um, someone for sex, you go to a... Uh, cash point. Pro. No, no. He knows all the words. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Hooker. A, hook, uh, a medieval Ruffle. word. Oh. oh, very good indeed. Um, the Spanish for Paul, and this is uh, Pablo. And uh, what's this? Gary it says beard, chin, Gary. chin, chin. And it's if something blew past it to make it cold, it would be a <laughs> cooler. Chin. Yeah, but oh, I've got a bit of a chiller. Chin chiller. Ch 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 um, uh, T Rex had a song. Oh, you look like a zebra. Do, 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 do. Oh, Deborah. Oh, Deborah. Deborah. And Sharon is. Sharon is. Is quite impressive. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Isn't right. And so, at the end of the game, David's team have 18 points, but this week's winner is Gary's team with 19! Oh. So, our thanks to David, Jonathan and Sharon, Gary, Rory and Mark. We're all off to let Sharon measure our feet. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Well, just until next Friday, that is, 9.30 here on BBC One. Stay with us tonight. Uri Geller is on top form, but can he walk Patrick Keelty?